The king, being uniquely powerful and heroic, will have no competitor. He will travel around the globe on his victorious chariot, holding his invincible bow in his hand and appearing exactly like the sun, which rotates in its own, own orbit from the cell. Purple. In this verse, the word yata kaha indicates that the sun is not fixed but is rotating in its orbit, which is set by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is confirmed in the Brahma Samhita and also in other parts of Srimad Bhagavatam. In 5th Canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that the sun rotates in its own orbit at the rate of 16,000 miles per second. Similarly, Brahma Samhita states, Yasya Gyana Ramati Samrita Kalachak. Uh-huh. The sun rotates in its own orbit according to the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The conclusion is that the sun is not fixed in one place. As far as Pritu Maharaj is concerned, it is indicated that his ruling power would extend all over the world. The Him- Himalaya mountains from which the sunrise is first seen are called Udaracha or Udaradri. It is herein indicated that uh, Prithu Maharaj's reign over the world would cover even the Himalaya mountains and extend to the borders of all oceans and seas. In other words, his reign would cover the entire planet. Another significant word in this verse is Naradeva, as described in previous verses. A qualified king, be he King Prithu, or any other king who rules over the state as an idol king, should be understood to be God in human form. According to Vedic culture, the king is honored as the supreme personality of Godhead because he represents Narayan, who also gives protection to the citizens. He is therefore Nata, or the proprietor. Even Sanatan Goswami gave respect to the Nawab Hussein Shah as Naradeva, Although the Nawab was Muhammadu, the king, or gov- governmental head, must therefore be comp- so competent to rule over the state that the citizens will worship him as God in human form. That is the perfectional stage for the head of any government or state. Shri Chaitanya Namo Dhistam Stavitam Yena Bhutale Swayarupagaramayam Dadati Svabhadantikam Ranchakapa Turubhischa Kripa Sindhu Vyevacha Patitanam Pavani Vyo Vaishavyo Namo Namaha Katayata Yasvinduskaram Sukaram Bhavit Vishwate Vipyati Shat Shri Chaitanya Nanamitam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gaudavakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Prita Maharaj is the representative the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Shakti Avesh Avatar, empowered by the Bhupala Shakti. Bhupala means one who protects the earth. So he is the perfect example of a governmental uh, head of state. The Srivad Bhagavatam provides all knowledge that you need. How to run a government is shown by Krita Maharaj. Many times you may be caught in a conversation and the conversation usually goes towards politics and that this politician doesn't know what he's doing. What is he doing with the country? He's cheating the people and he should just leave. But Srila Prabhupada has uh, condemned democracy. He calls a demon crazy. Why is that? Because 
Kala Sudra Sambhava. Everyone in Kali Yuga is born as a Sudra. Sudra is known as one who always laments. He doesn't know what, it, what is right and wrong. He's a miser. He doesn't know how to use the human form of life. Just giving in to the mind and senses. So those are the personalities that are voting in the, the leader, the president or prime minister. So they'll vote someone in just like themselves. Someone who's just a hog or a dog. In Australia, there was one election, I think it was in 2007. So as the two candidates for the position of prime minister was in place, so they have their campaigns. They try and find some dirt on the other politician and expose it. So they try to expose the opposition leader, saying that he was in America and he was with other ministers and they went to a strip club. And you know, this, this is why you shouldn't vote for him. He's low class, he's not a real uh, upstanding personality. So the opposition leader, he did not deny it. He says, yes, we went. But we are men, this is what we do, we go to strip clubs. Actually that made him more popular amongst the public. Oh, he's an honest man, he's just like us. Yeah, we'll vote for him. This is demon crazy, or democracy. But Prita Maharaj is not such a personality. Prita Maharaj, he's only Focus is to fulfill dharma, to fulfill the order of the Supreme Personality of Buddha. It is the definition of dharma. Uh, religion is not man-made. Religion is the law set down by God. And the chatriyas are meant to uphold such dharma. That is the meaning of chatriya. One who protects one from hurt. If one doesn't follow Dharma, one will end up suffering. But if one follows Dharma, pretty much Dharma protects that person. That representative of the Supreme Person, Prita Maharaj, has been compared to three things here. Uh, in the purple, Srila Prabhupada has highlighted the, that he's just like the sun. He is, uh, he is just like the Himalayan mountains. And he is just like a god in human form. So let's look at the different qualities of these three comparisons. So the sun, here it's, it's, we are giving the quote from the Brahma Samhita that it's, uh, it is known as Kala Chakra. It's known as the king of all planets and it's rotating it has its orbit within the universe modern science says that it's stationary and all planets are going around the sun but no the sun has its own orbit according to Srimad Bhagavatam and it's even showing in detail the nature of the sun god he is on his chariot right now <laughs> He is traveling at 16,000 miles per second. That's a fast car. <laughs> no Formula One driver. <laughs> and he's not like, <laughs> he's not struggling with this, you know. No, he's sitting there and he's being offered prayers by 60,000 uh, sages called the Vialakyakas. Right. They're like the size of a thumb. They're very small, actually. I, 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 I saw this uh, reference of these small sages. Um, I think it was in the 12th canto, 11th canto. And it was ex I think it was expressing the, the, the merciful nature of the Lord. And uh, the Lord saved these thumb-sized uh, sages from drowning in like a small puddle. He saved them, you know, and they offered prayers to them. <laughs> 60,000 of them. 
So they are offering prayers to the Lord and there's like uh, other personalities involved in holding the chariot together which pulls the sun. And the sun is considered Josh. The sun is the king of planets because the universe is dark by nature. There's no light. Unless there's a sun, then yes, there's light. In the Bhagavad Gita it says in the spiritual world, there's no need of sun, moon, or electricity. Because the planets are self-illuminated. Even the personalities are self-illuminating. But to speak of Krishna's effulgence, the Brahma Jyoti emanating from him. When uh, there was the churning of the milk ocean, and um, they were struggling to uh, uh, whether to get the, uh, the churning rod in the form of that mountain, they couldn't lift it. And then the Lord appeared and He was so effulgent that they, they couldn't really see anything. So this is the, the effulgence that exists in the spiritual world. But such effulgence doesn't exist in the material world. This one universe is covered by so many layers of the five, of the eight elements of earth, fire, water, wind, ethers, mind, intelligence and false ego one ten times greater than the next. So we're like buried <laughs> under all of this. But no, there is the, the sun planet giving light to all planets, to all life. And the sun is compared as the eyes of the Lord. And the universal form is referred to that. His blinking is the day and the night and the sun is appearing and disappearing in the sky. And the sun is also known as like taking life away. As the sun rises and sets, everyone's life is taken away, except for those who are absorbed in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So the sun is giving life. When I hear this word, mentioned Udarachal or like sunrise Udai. It reminds me of this verse of Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sabakaranoi Sravanali Surachite Kurayoda that the living entity has love of God already within the heart. It's not coming from an outside source. But by Shravanadi, by hearing and other activities of devotional service, it starts to rise up from within the heart. The Viveswan, the, the sun god or the president of the sun planet, he is a direct disciple of Krishna himself. He received Bhagavad Gita. It was like two, two million years ago, 120 million years ago. I can't remember this. <laughs> I mean, hundreds of millions of years ago. He heard the Bhagavad Gita. So he's a devotee. So we can see Prita Maharaj has the same qualities as the sun, as the sun god. Very heroic, heroic and powerful. To give life to his citizens. Just like the king of planets gives life to all other planets. Prita Maharaj is described as the Himalayan mountains. Yeah. Himalayan mountains in the Bhagavad Gita is known as uh, representing the Lord as immovable, immovable things, things that cannot be moved. I am the Himalayan mountains. This is Krishna's representative. So we see here that Prita Maharaj was always fixed in Dharma. And then here it's referring that his reign was all over the planet. He was so powerful. His influence was all over the planet. So we may not, it seems like mythology, like how can someone rid the whole planet? How could everyone know the one person or, or work, follow the orders of one person? But we get enamored by this kind of influence, especially on the internet. Someone has like 3 billion, 4 billion views. Wow. 
He's influential. Well, the whole world is watching him. You know, we meet someone who gets like, you know, they have like a Instagram or YouTube channel, hundred thousand followers. Wow, a lot of people know him. He must be famous. Can I get a selfie with him? <laughs> Prita Maharaj's influence was not just where there's civilizations in some cities, no, or where they get internet, no, Himalayan mountains, yeah, all over the seas and oceans, his influence was there. There was no one who did not know him or could follow his order. That's why it makes him Naradeva. He was the ideal king, God in the human form. And this is what the, the purpose of the king is, to engage everyone in devotional service, not in sinful activity. The leaders of today are engaging everyone in meat-eating, illicit sex, intoxication and gambling. In Australia, I'm from Australia, that's why I'm always referring to Australia. <laughs> in Australia, there is, no, one, no one believes in God, but there is a religion. Religion is sport. <laughs> they have their devotional cloth and their, you know, the, the, the sporting team they go for. They have their bhajans or the different chants supporting their team. They have their acharyas, the players and the coaches. And they look up to them. I want to be like them. Training hard all life. Should try and be an acharya. <laughs> And they have their places of worship, the different sporting fields. They will come. One time we did Harinam at the grand final of the football match. And there's all these people surrounding the football stadium before the match starts. And you're going around. And one time His Holiness Jananda Maharaj came with us. Actually what happened was that so we have, you have football, like worldwide known, the World Cup. So there's an Australian version of football. It's pretty much made by convicts. So Australia was known as a place where in, the British would send the prisoners. So it's just a big prison house. So then they started colonizing and um, it's Australia now. And so they developed their own form of football and it's pretty much just you you just punch people that's that's the full format there's a big field there, there is a ball but you can punch people and hit people as much as you like no problem this is Australian culture <laughs> so the people who follow this sport they're of the same nature and uh, you know we go around with Hari now and they're all drinking they're all punching each other and somehow we're there yeah, somehow we got on TV as well, we're giving out cookies. <laughs> and then the match is, is about to start and there's still last people going inside and we're still chanting, Jananda Maharaj is there. And there's one lady and she has like no teeth. Like you can tell she's probably also been in some fights, you know. And she's just like calling out, she's dancing with us, she's drunk. And, but she's like calling out for a football team. Oh, football team, yeah. They were called the magpies. Go, oh, magpies, like this. And then all of a sudden, she just like stops, sees John and Andamaraj like bouncing up and down, and just starts paying obeisances. She's real shocked. She's like, oh. <laughs> so the nature of people, they want to worship somebody. And especially when it comes to someone of leadership, they want them to be of like, Perfect character. And the, we see the perfect character of Peter Maharaj. He only cared. He had love for the citizens, the praja, those who were born on his land. Not just for the human beings, but for the animals as well. When he is known as the son of King Vena. King Vena was a very ruthless king. He was so ruthless, ruthless that as a child, when he was playing with other kids, he would kill them. He was so ruthless. But then he was installed as king because they needed a king. And still rogues and thieves were scared of him. 
But then he disrespected the Brahmanas. He says, why are you worshipping this Vishnu? You should worship me. I'm the one maintaining you. You are like, just like prostitutes who don't honor their master. And that was too, too much for the Brahmanas. And they killed him by sound vibration. They said the word was hum. So don't hum too much. Kill someone. So when he died, then the rogues and thieves took over again. So they needed to have a righteous king. So they preserved the body, it says in oils and herbs, kind of like a mummification now. And they did, they churned different parts of his body. I remember asking Banu Maharaj about this. I was like, how do they churn the body and produce a person? So Banu Maharaj said, this is, this is a cloning actually. <laughs> cloning. You know, they clone like animals and sheep and they, from the body, they make a replica. Cloning, yes. Cloning. Uh, so, I think it was from the legs, they, clone, they churned and they produced the, the head of the Nasadas. Um, and then they got the arms and churn, and then Pritu and Achi came from that churn. Because they want to preserve the seminal line of Dhruva Maharaj, who was a great devotee. So they didn't want to have someone like Dhruva Maharaj to come and save the world. And Pritu Maharaj, he was such a great protector, because the earth was overburdened by all these simple activities taking place, and she held back all the grains and the foodstuffs and resources. And then Prithu Maharaj was thinking, no, this is wrong. And he, he wanted to chastise the earth. So the earth tried to protect itself by taking the form of a cow. And said, you are a chatriya, you should protect the cow and women. How can you kill me? And said, but you are being sinful. You are, you're, by you holding back all the resources, my praja, the citizens, I'm not getting what they need, they are dying, so I must... I'm even ready to kill you, chop you into pieces to feed, feed the citizens. So then she understood and she took shelter of the Chatriya, of, of Pritamara. So it's Chatriya code that, just like when Kali took shelter of Pariksha Maharaj, even though he was a criminal, smashing the legs of Dharma, in the skies of a king, then uh, very easily he could have just killed him. But no, he, he t Kali took shelter of him and goes, I'm also your project, give me shelter. In the same way, Peter Maharaj gave shelter to Bhumi Dev. He says, yes, then we must uh, get the resources then. He says, well, I'm a cow, I need a calf to be milked. So then he, with his bow, he was so powerful, he could level the land. And he was so powerful, he could maintain the earth himself. He didn't need B Bhumi Dev. But then he brought different personalities to invoke affection out of Bhumi Devi to give resource or milk, which comes as resources. Unfortunately, the only one I can remember is that he brought Prahlad Maharaj, who's the head of the demons, and then the milk came out as beer and liquor in an iron pot. <laughs> Maybe I'm a demon, that's why I remember it. So all resources were provided due to the mercy of Prince Maharaj. He was such an upstanding uh, leader of society. What's funny that now, in the end of this purport, Prabhupada mentions Sanatana Goswami gave respect to the Nawab Hussein Shah. He was a Mohammedan, cow eater, cow killer. Because the Nawab Hussein Shah was inquiring about Lochitaya Mahaprabhu, he was getting such popularity. And Sanatana Goswami, he, he wanted to play it down that he's not an important, important personality. So Mahaprabhu would be undisturbed by the Muslim rulers. But the Nawab was very intelligent 
because he says, I'm worshipped because I give charity sometimes, I provide things, I give money. So people respect, honor me, worship me. But I see him, he's giving no charity. He doesn't even have any wealth. But people still follow him regardless. I know he's someone special. Then Sanatana Goswami says, well, you know, look within your heart and find out who he is. You are not a deva. You are a, rep you're a god in human form. You've been placed in the position of a leader by the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. Look within your heart and see what he says. And then now he saw within his heart, he understood, yes, this is, um, this is the, the Lord himself. So to have such a position of leadership is not an accident. Within our own movement, we have managers, we have leaders, we have people we have to answer to. And we think that, why are they there? They're not doing a good job. He's not even very pure, he's got some contamination. You know, why is he in this position? No, he's been put in this position by Krishna himself. This service has been given to Krishna to manage devotees. So we should honor his position. We should honor the choice of the Supreme Lord by following their instruction to us. It can be in the form of the Guru, it can be in the form of the Temple President, Temple Commander, the Sankirtan Leader, the Mother and Father. They have also been put, we've been put under their direction by the Lord for the particular purification we need. Just like the Pandavas, they did not agree with Yudhisthira's choices many of the time. Just like when Duridam was captured by the Gandavas, they wanted to come and show off their wealth to the, to the Pandavas who were in exile. It's like, wow, we have so many hours, we have so much wealth, we are the emperors. And then Karin have a good idea. Yeah, let's show it off. Rub it in their face. They're all living in the forest, you know, in the huts. And we're like so opulent. So they wanted to rub it in their face. So they brought all the opulence to they, where they found that the Pandavas were. They came to a lake which was ruled by Gandavas. And the Gandavas said, no, you cannot come here. It's ruled by Gandavas. Don't come. And Duridan, with so much ego, said, who do you think you're talking to? Yeah. Get out of the way, we're coming through. And then the Gandhava was okay then. And then they had a big battle. And Karina was there, he got defeated, he ran away, and they captured Duridan. So word got to Yudhisthi. Yudhisthi was doing some yagya at that moment with Brahmanas. And they said, the, the messenger said, yes, Duridan has been captured by the Gandhavas. And then Yudhisthi told, told Arjuna, it's like, oh, he's a. Uh, we have to save him then. And then Arjuna and Bhim are like, what? Why are we going to save Duridan? These Gandavas, they took care of our job, you know. Let's leave him in, in suffering. And then Yusuf said, no. No, Bhima. No, Arjuna. Amongst each other, we may see ourselves, ourselves as Kurus and Pandavas. But to the public, we are all Kurus. They all see us as Kurus. So we may be in this movement and we may have guru cliques, we may have certain groups of people amongst us and we may conflict. But to the public, we are all part of the same thing. We are all ISKCON, we are all under Prabhupada. So we should look out for each other, regardless of the differences we have, because we are all under Prabhupada. We are representatives of Prabhupada. So then, Maharaj Yudhisthira said, I cannot go though. I have to finish this yagya. But you, Arjuna and Bhima, you guys go. So if you imagine, you completely disagree with Yudhisthira. And it's his idea. Why didn't he go? He's telling you to go and save this rascal. He's like, okay, let's go. He's the eldest brother. We must listen to him. This is the, the, the etiquette. So they go, they fight with the Gandavas. 
and uh, Arjuna is so expert and he defeats the Gandavas. They try and take him away into the sky. He shoots some special arrow with the mantra and he traps them. And then he says, release Duryodhana at once. The Gandavas revealed that they were sent by Indra, Arjuna's father, to try and give them a heart, you know, to try and help the Pandavas. And Arjuna said, no, you just said, let go of Duryodhana right now. And then Duryodhana, he said, he, he, he was saved, he goes, okay, what do you want? I owe you a favor, you saved my life. Arjuna said, I'll ask you later. So then, there was a time where Arjuna needed the favor. At the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Bhishma Dev was approached by Duryodhana one night. So they would fight during the day, but at night, you know, there was no fighting. Sometimes they go to each other's camps, have dinner, hey, that was a, it was like sport nearly, the war for Chacharyas. And then, you know, just like sporting people, they're very really fierce on the, on, the, on the field, on the court, but then, you know, they go and meet up, have dinner, and say, hey, that was a nice move, you did their nice goal. You know, they respect each other's uh, prowess in sporting. So the Chacharyas, they respect each other's chivalry their prowess in battle. So Duridan approached Bhishma Dev, he says to his grandfather, he goes, you're just holding back. You're not putting everything into it. You have affection for the Pandavas. You're not a real Chatriya. So Bhishma says, oh really? Really, you think so? So then he put five arrows in front of him, one for each Pandava, and he vowed that I have killed the Pandavas with each arrow on the battlefield tomorrow. So then he invokes some mantras into them and he says, okay, but Duridan he didn't trust Bhishma did. So he goes, okay, then I'll take the arrows with me. He says, fine. Krishna knew about Duridan's plan and because Krishna is always a step ahead. He told Arjuna, he says, hey Arjuna, you know how Duridan owes you a favor? He, get, he needs a you, you need a favor from him? He says, yeah, okay, so let's, you should go and see Duridan and ask him for those five arrows. And he's like, okay. So he goes there. And then Duridan, he welcomes Arjuna. Good reception, everything. This is Chatriya code. You receive them very nicely, even the enemy in the Vedic culture. You should receive even an enemy as if they think they're not the enemy anymore. So he says, please come, have a drink, sit here. So, you want, the, you want the kingdom without a battle? Is that what you're asking for? He says, no, no, no. Uh, I want those five arrows. And Duryodhana is like, ah, Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> and because the Chatra is a man of their word, he gave the arrows. Duryodhana goes back to Bhishma Dev. He says, grandfather, Arjuna took the arrows, I had this favor, I had to give it back. So then Bhishma vows that either Krishna breaks his promise or Arjuna will die on the battlefield tomorrow. Next day a battle takes place. Bhishma is cleaning house. He is killing all the Pandava soldiers. Left, right, and so he said his bow is in a full circle. Astros flying everywhere. He was unstoppable. And then he was attacking Arjuna. He was like cutting his bow. He's nearly about to die. And then Krishna, he, he's known as Bhaktivatsal, one who, he, who, who serves his devotee, one who cares for his devotee. Vatsal means like the calf. He's like the calf of the Bhakta. He ran like a lion towards Bhishma Dev. And it says that his golden cloth was like flying off and all the dust was coming on his face, perspiration. It looks so beautiful actually. And Bhishma Dev, he's a pure devotee. And he's in this shivers ras, in this uh, vira ras with, um, with Krishna. And he's, he's flying arrows at Krishna. And he says, please come at me, O oh, lotus eyed one. He wants to be killed by Krishna. And the arrows, they go into the body of the Lord. 
And Vishwa Chakravarti he's in this Madhuri Ras, he says, Krishna felt these arrows just like a, the love bites of a fiancé on their lover. He took them as offerings of love. <laughs> Krishna is not stereotype, Prabhupada says. <laughs> but don't try and offer arrows to Krishna. <laughs> But Arjuna, he is also in love with Krishna. He's like, no, don't break your promise. And he's like holding on to you. May see, where's the picture? There it is. You can see Arjuna is holding on to Krishna's leg. It's like, no, don't break your promise. And then Bhishma is ready to be killed by the... And Krishna, he just picks up this chariot wheel, ready to kill Bhishma Dev. It says when Bhishma Dev was about to leave, he's always remembering this form of the Lord coming at him. He remembers him coming with his chariot wheel in this electric, it was like a, he describes his cloth as electric lightning aura. The color of his yellow cloth coming at him, ready to kill him. But Bhishma Dev, he dropped his weapons and, and, and then Krishna stopped and Arjuna was saved and Bhishma's promise was fulfilled, his desire was fulfilled. So Krishna had to fulfill the desire of the pure devotees, both Bhishma Dev and Arjuna. That you declare boldly, O Arjuna, that my devotee will never perish. So this is the this is the nature of Krishna and his relation with his devotee. And we can see that Prithumaraj represents such a great person like Krishna by being always protective of his citizens to make sure they become pure devotees. And we'll see later on that how he receives the four Kumaras and gives him everything. He treats the devotees so nicely. So I'll stop here. If there's any comments or questions on what we discuss, especially from seniors. Did you want to add something for Maharaj, Prabhuji? You can add. Everyone's senior to me here. Raghunath Bhatt Prabhu, Svetadip Prabhu. Thank you very much. So, many times you'll see in these purports referring to Prita Maharaj and uh, Prabhupada will pretty much emphasize that um, a government is supposed to uh, allow or enhance the performance of Sankirtan Yagya. So, it's, I guess that's a great credit we could give to those governments that allow Sankirtan Yagya to go on. 
because there are some places it cannot go on. So at least that is there. Is the president still Ramaphosa? Ramaphosa, is, that, is he still the president? So we give him credit for having such an amazing name. Rama Posta. <laughs> Everyone's chanting the holy name because <laughs> of him. <laughs> we give him credit for that, right? And um, his all this good of a coverage. He mentions about the breakdown of the Soviet Union um, be, because of uh, the, the, the leader of his name was Gorbachev. So he always heard Gora, Gora, Gorbachev. <laughs> Eventually, you'll have to <laughs> break down communism. Um, so, yeah, even Donald Trump, he, we give him credit because he allowed, um, in one of his, uh, I think one of his car yards in Detroit, he allowed the devotees to, use, to keep the Rathiatra card there. And even those who are leaders amongst the people, uh, musicians, they also are very influential, you know, so they may have some shortcoming, like the uh, Rolling Stones. They donated for the marble on the, of the altar in the first temple in London, for Radha London Ishra. So, you know, like, maybe that's why they're still famous now, <laughs> after 50 years. <laughs> you know, so much punya. Um, so yes, we are going to give, we are going to recognize people's uh, service that does help the Sankirtan movement. But um, we, we will always see the ideal, we will always compare the ideal government of Pritamaraj. Prabhupada says that, I've heard in lectures, that our strategy to try and change leadership to become more like a Raja Rishi would be in mass preaching, to preach to the masses, to purify them through holy name, book distribution, prasadam distribution. If they become purified, do elect someone more purified, someone of more upstanding character. That's kind of the idea of it. And we can see there is some move towards having a better leader like uh, Modi in India, you know, he, he, have, he established Ayodhya as the place of Ram now, with this big temple and everything, and changing the names to its original Sanskrit names of different cities, and there's a lot of improvement we see in Vrindavan um, by the government, they're making it more, uh, uh, more uh, accommodating for pilgrims. In Jagannath Puri, I don't, recently devotees have been there. And usually the streets are you know, cluttered with people, rickshaws, cars, whatever else. But around the Jagannath Mandir, it's completely clear. There's like big parks and everything. No cars, no rickshaws running through. It's like very, it's very nice, you know. You can be absorbed in Jagannath much more than just having all these cars and rickshaws and, you know, while, and different shopkeepers so I mean yes we have some leaders who are doing things that are favorable to the Sankatan movement and they will get that credit yes we'll definitely do that and um, but with the Bhagavatam where you know we're talking you know pure devotional service the highest standard of a leader so that's also there it's okay yeah. thank you You ask for who? Thank you very much for your beautiful class. I think the point you made that I very much like is um, the fact that we all are in touch with our life.
is the all of us as members of the International Society for National Consciousness. So when there is some conflict, when there is some misunderstanding, when there is some friction, when there is some fighting, the outsiders, they will simply see that the members of the Hare Krishna movement, the members of the Kaurapada movement, they are fighting. And that is the service of the Kaurapada. So it's a very important point you made. That let's tie our divisions, so to speak. We should not be divided because we have one goal. Our goal is to go from what to what In a spiritual world, there is no division. Go look at the ground and try to Or my foot and try to It's just that the goals of nature in this material world is so conditioned. The goals of nature are so conditioned that we can't see beyond our noses. Whatever we see within that reality. The reality is different. From Krishna's perspective, the reality is different. So that's a very powerful point you made. And I want to take that again. So I want to amplify it so others can get a message. Thank you very much. Thank you.